Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to spend a little bit of time really focusing on three Facebook post strategies that cut through and engage and amplify your brand on Facebook and then beyond because we don't want to just hang out on Facebook, just build a neighborhood there, but we really want to use what we're building there to amplify far beyond to all of the search engines, to Pinterest, and all of the other social media sites. And then, of course, integrate with traditional media and digital media. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time and then afterwards open up the dashboard so that we could begin answering any of your questions that you might have. So welcome to another edition of Summa Social Elite, hosted by myself, Donna Newman of Summa Social. And always remember that after our time together, I'll always post this webinar in the Summa Social Elite Facebook group. And then you'll also have it in the back dashboard of Summa Social. So that at any point in that future, you wanted to refer back to any of the ideas, share it with your team, get everybody on board, it'll be there for you. And with today's topic, let's just jam right in it. Let's get right straight to it. Because one of the biggest questions that I get asked, probably a couple of times a day to be really honest, is how do I create more engagement on my Facebook page? So creating consistent conversation on your Facebook page is anything but easy, but it is simple. So to help you with this challenge, I've compiled a few actual Facebook posts from different pages across different industries that are our clients and some aren't, that have created genuine engagement and given you the science behind their success. And these posts are the real deal. They're not just big posts from like Starbucks and Zappos that are a little bit hard to model, but mom and pop actual examples so that when you model them, you can replicate their success pretty much in short order. And even if these specific posts don't highlight your industry, each post uses a specific strategy that you can in turn model to start eliciting more engagement on your own Facebook page. According to a Com score, Google and Facebook are still the biggest sources of traffic. Many companies, as all of you here this morning, have explored the use of Facebook for your brand. So my goal today is to provide effective insights and strategies for incorporating this explosive site, Facebook, into your company's marketing mix, no matter your industry, and giving you, at the end of our time together, three specific ideas and then exact examples. So literally, if you copy them, you can have great success. And if you model them, you'll have replicated success. One of the biggest selling points about Facebook and probably any social media platform is definitely this particular strategy right here. We have 90% of consumers online trust recommendations from people they know. And then 70% of the consumers are online trusting recommendations from unknown users. So when you really size that up, what you're finding is that people value recommendations. That's still the highest calling for why most people get business in the first place. It's all about word of mouth, it's recommendations. A valuable person that you know, like, and trust recommends somebody else that they know, like, and trust, and in turn, a consummation of a relationship is built. And the science behind why that's so successful online is that people are going first to a search engine to look for your industry or look for your service. And with that being said, they're looking at online recommendations, traditional sites like Yelp. They're looking at consumer reports, online versions of that. They're looking at recommendations through testimonials that are on your Facebook page. And so knowing that that is like the backbone behind what is causing people to tip over to make a purchase, you got to be on Facebook and then you got to intentionally give them what they're looking for, which in this case, they want recommendations about your product. And that's one of the reasons why great posts with your photographs of your great clients or videos talking about your specific industry, your service, uh, your team is so valuable and usually the tipping point for them wanting to use you. 
And then the difference we want to focus on too between paid, owned, and earned media. We all know about the paid media. We're talking traditional media with paid uh, print advertising. Sometimes that's TV. Sometimes that's radio. It's banner ads. Uh, it's newspaper advertisement. It's paid search. And then you look at owns. You're talking SEO. That's your own websites. That's widget or apps that you add within your email like eye contact, etc. But then the most valuable is really earned. And as much as we know we've got to do the paid and we've got to have the owned, it's the earned that's the most important. And when you really wrap your brain around it, it's the earned that is going to fuel your word of mouth. And that is the most scalable. That is actually a cell entry on your spreadsheet. When you're looking at what is my 2013 look like? Well, how can you generate more earned media so that you can write in there that there's an expectation of what that dollar amount is going to bring in there for you? So in turn, we're looking at SEO. We're looking at Facebook, uh, YouTube. We're looking at Pinterest. We're looking at forums like the social media forums of Twitter, of LinkedIn, where you are building your brand, but you're doing it from a vantage point of showcasing the results and then backing into, well, how did you get those results? Well, I use this particular real estate agent. How did you get those results? Well, I worked with this incredible leader and she was an awesome coach. Well, how did you get those results? Well, it just so turned out that my smile is simply because of this great dental. So when you think about it, Earned is the most important platform that we really want to focus on. So today, in that interest, we're going to focus on Facebook and how do you earn the, the privilege of serving more people and allowing that to be a scalable cell entry on your Excel spreadsheet as you're going into 2013. So here's what you're going to learn in our time together. First, you're going to cut through the noise of Facebook. And when you do this, early research from major brands are showing that Facebook can drive substantial traffic to your website, to your service, to your Facebook page. So when you do this, you want to understand who's my target audience and how, what do I want from them? What, what do they want from me? And to be able to supply that on your engaging posts. The second thing in our time together is we're going to look at engagement to build lasting relationships. And the hint here is this really happens when you know your target audience. So you have to linger long enough to really understand what are their pain points? What do they want from us? What, what's titillating for them? And how can I offer that information? And then third, we're going to end it with amplification beyond your fan page and your networks. As well, I'm going to pack this webinar with plenty of specific examples to model because I don't know about you, but I always learn best when I see examples. So let's head straight into some. The first thing that we're going to look at is we're going to cut through and we're going to change out your cover photo. And the reason, uh, guys, this is so important is because majority of people, when they first come to your page, will only come to your page once and then everything else that they see from your page they say research says 90 percent is that they're going to see it in their newsfeed so if that's the case you want to frequently change up your cover banner so that it is available for the first time browser coming to your site or the repeat browser but then every time you change up your cover banner it auto saves to your photo album. Second, it auto posts to your wall so that people have a chance to see that beautiful banner, that engaging post, maybe it's timely, coming through, threading through their newsfeed. It's going to get a lot of likes because it's going to be full of great images and that's the number one element get, that gets the most engagement on Facebook. But then here you've got a great chance to be able to showcase some specific timely promotions. You have to be a little uh, responsive that Facebook doesn't want you to put percentages on there or promo codes, but you can put engaging photographs like Starbucks up here and then the yogurt did up there, but you put the end experience. Wouldn't it be great to experience this Frappuccino? Wouldn't it be great to have this engagement um, of eating your yogurt like that? 
Then you look at something that's a little bit more close to home. Those are big brands. And you look at a group down here, you've got a real estate group, beautiful brand new building, commercial building that they're showcasing. But then something that's even more clever, and I'll show you this in the next slide too. Here we've got a fabulous commercial building, but the inside of that commercial building is showcased with four additional vignettes, some of which are interior, some of which are the outside terrain. So here you've got an opportunity to showcase this is on the market, and here are four vignettes of what's inside of our product that's on the market. And another great way to do that is simple. Again, we're bringing this back to your own neighborhood. This, this is a particular template we have in the back of the Summa Social dashboard, whereby you can come in here and you can create just like Jen did. You can put in your entire background, you can put in your particular logo. And then because we have four slots here, she put in four specific listings. Um, and then she's got, or one listing, but she's got four vignettes of that specific listing. So she's got the curb appeal, she's got the backyard, she's got the experience that you would have if you have all the recreation indulged in, like the pool. And then she's got the, the, the far distant image of what the backyard looks like. And you create this image without saying very little words. So each time she's got a brand new listing, her strategy is she wants to put it up. And she deals with a lot of luxury markets down in Gilbert. So it gives her a chance to be able to thread through the newsfeed on a current event, a current commodity that she is selling, and it's engaging, but it's in a very friendly, non-threatening way. It keeps her top of mind, letting everybody know that she's still a realtor and boy, she's doing great business. And she has another luxury product on the market. And here, the second thing I wanted to show you that is so often overlooked is adding photo albums. This is how you cut through the noise of Facebook. First of all, because very few people do it. And second of all, because it's a great way for you to showcase your products and it's almost like having a portfolio. So an example here is this fabulous team, Soma Realty Group, and they're specialized in North Scottsdale of Arizona. Here we've got a great opportunity where if you look at their photo album on the left-hand side, you're going to see that each of those photo albums, and these are only nine, have showcased each of the territories in which they have special featured MLS listings. But each of those, like Sonoran Hills, Terra Vida, True North, uh, Cinquenados, Scottsdale Mountain, etc., has an album full of photographs, and it also has captions within each of those photographs. It has key titles for not only in within the captions, but it has a key title that you can see right here. Silverleaf is a private enclave of custom home sites. So the keyword in the title and having the specific captions within each photograph and having an engaging description allows you to have this portfolio. So now everybody knows what are the the areas, the territories that they specialize in that they can help me find a home in. What also happens here is when you have keywords and engaging descriptions, you keep people on Facebook, which is where they want to be in the first place. And it gives Sama Realty Group an opportunity to showcase within Facebook, but also outside to the search engines, a specific photograph and an album that talks about Silverleaf so it can be picked up in the search engines. It gives people a real mood uh, for what it would be like to live there. It gives them an exact idea of what some of the houses would look like should they choose to purchase or look there. It gives them an idea of how close it might be to the freeways, to uh, what are the golf amenities, what's the neighborhood look like relative to schools and grocery shopping. So here they cover all of that in a very clever approach. And while they only have three photographs for each album, this is a good boilerplate because now when they get future photographs coming in or future content, they can continue to build to the album. 
The second thing that we want to focus on here is engagement to build lasting relationships. And one of the first ways to do that is to follow a content calendar. Now, while a lot of you are utilizing some of the existing libraries of content inside of the Summa Social Dashboard, and that goes out seven business or seven days, five business days, and then weekends, sometimes you want to be able to put together your own localized content because it's the localized content that will pick you up in the local search engines. And it's that local content that will cause people to engage upon your promotions, uh, upon specific events, and they look towards your content that's threading through their newsfeed as a resource for, what am I gonna do this weekend? How am I gonna spend my time? Where should I make my purchases? What kind of Christmas presents should I buy? And so when you've got a sample weekly calendar, you, whether you plug it with specific posts or you just kind of follow our sample weekly calendar with really good ideas and kind of the science behind why the idea is a good one in the first place, you have a bare bone that will help you generate some ideas. And you do not have to post every day. We recommend that your timing be no more than twice a day. And you can post if you want once a day, a couple times a week. But remember, is that whatever it is, you want to be responsive to what your clients are interested in seeing you. How often do they want to see you in the newsfeed? So kind of some rules of the thumb are no more than twice a day. And as you can see here, you've got the most engagement, obviously, is on the weekends. People are spending a little bit more time on the weekends looking on Facebook. So if you've got some engaging posts that are local about what to do, where to spend their time, uh, how to get a good deal, you're going to engage them and they're going to maybe print out a coupon off one of your posts, maybe specifically follow your advice. And here you've affected your audience and you provide a huge value. And then during the week, you've got Monday, Tuesday, Thursday that seem to be the most responsive when it comes to Facebook with Thursday, kind of a big star around Thursday. That seems to be the day where a lot of people are looking at Facebook, whew, I got through the week, and now I have a little bit of downtime to be able to spend on Facebook. But following a content calendar, whether it's specific or it's just following the general guidelines that we've put forward for you, it gives you a, a good baseline so you have something exactly that you can follow. And then it's about compelling posts. And I'm gonna walk through three different ideas. Sometimes when you write a post, you just simply have to tell people what to do because they, they just numbly go through Facebook. It's like watching a TV show. I'm sitting on the sofa. I got my popcorn, soda pops in the other hand, and I'm just going to watch and you're going to entertain me. But you, you okay, so you want to entertain them, but at the same time, you want to generate some action. Hey, guys, I want you to do this. So an example is this one right here. Like if you can relate to this or share if this made you chuckle or at least crack a smile this Saturday morning. And as you can see, the response was pretty good because 1043 followed with a like and then we've got 332 that have shared it. So sometimes you have to say at the end of your post, not just like a stamp of a documentary or a quick title. Sometimes you got to have a little playful, hey, like if you can relate to this or share if this made you chuckle or like question mark. A second idea is posts that end with a question get a 15% higher engagement rate. And what you'll find is that everybody has an opinion. So the science behind that is because they have an opinion and most people obviously can't hold back their opinion. They want to share it. So it gives you an opportunity to generate some interest, some content, and some comments that, again, further allows you to develop that relationship with them, or at least have some talking points that when you go off Facebook or you send them a private message to follow up, you have an opportunity to customize and generate that call to action so that you can help them with your service or your business. And the next one that gets a lot, and this is my son's favorite school to go to, uh, the one that gets the most influence is fill in the blank posts. They generate so much interest because again, people have opinions and they like to play and be entertained. So 
Here's an example. If I were graduating from high school this year, I would love to attend blank for college. So a cute girl, you've got my son's favorite team on there, and you get an opportunity to participate. And it makes you as a, as a fan feel as though people are interested in having some response. They want to know what I'm thinking. It's not just them dictating what I'm going to watch at 7 o'clock at night like a good TV station. But you want to get to know me. You want to build a relationship. And it's fun. And people really enjoy social media because it's fun. But because you know the science behind it, you're going to utilize the fun approach to generate their comments, to generate getting to know them better, and then bringing them through the finish line so that they want, want to use you. And then we get into some compelling posts. And this is where I was talking about the richness of the local and the timely. So we have in Suma Social Dashboard, we've got some timeless posts that go out that are engaging. And if you utilize them, it's a good way to get um, your commitment on a regular basis threading through a newsfeed. But then if you want to be able to take advantage of certain timely posts like events, maybe you've got local events such as maybe there's a big promotion going on, then we want to give you some of the science behind loading up it up into the Suma social dashboard, putting it on the calendar so that it stamps your, your wall at a specific time. So some examples here, and this is all the apartment real estate industry. First one up top left, we are proud to announce that our dry cleaners is now open and they are offering 50% off dry cleaning. See, please see the store for further details. And they are located next to et cetera. So here you have an apartment complex that is taking advantage of a local dry cleaner close to their, their location. And it gives the dry cleaning a shout out. And second, it also builds a relationship. And then it adds value for all of the owners there who maybe they're new to the, maybe they're new to the, of the community, maybe they they don't um, they don't know the the best deals around, and so here it gives them a good opportunity to meet a great dry cleaner close to the property and for a good promotion. And then another is UPS is here. If you've been waiting for UPS package, call the office and I will check for you. Again, another local shout out, letting people know that the UPS it comes at a certain time within the office, and if anybody any resident wants to leave anything for them. Rather than going down to the UPS station themselves, you have an opportunity to take advantage of, of their service up front. So these are some of the ways that you can create local and timely. And then bottom is they're talking to the residents and they're telling them to remember that there's a brand new appreciation day. And by the way, we're going to have a dinner. So it allows people to feel more part of a community, especially in our economy, which is very frayed. Uh, geographically and frayed economically, when you can create a, a family experience, we're going to have a family dinner, everybody, we're going to dig in, we're going to get to know each other, you're going to be able to appeal to the basic sense that people really want to build upon relationships. And whether you're in real estate, you're in dentist, you're a, a great coach, this gives you an opportunity to relate to their basic need, which is they want to be included, and it gives them an opportunity to see your asset in, in full bloom. And then we move on to the third, which here is a big deal because we want to amplify not only in Facebook, but we really want to go beyond our, our fans. We want to build bigger. And the one of the best ways to do that is to at tag your partners. So here's a couple of examples. Up on the top right, you've got the University Village. And again, we're looking at real estate. And this is an apartment complex in real estate. And they're showcasing a couple of at tags. They're looking at uh, the off-campus student services of a local university that's close to this particular property. And they're also looking at the business page for the neighborhood services and the collaboration for that student services uh, location. So here they are building or they've already built a relationship with that university. Probably the majority of their people that attend their complex are going to be students, uh, juniors, seniors, maybe masters. And that gives them an opportunity to integrate the, their apartment campus with the 
collegiate campus and providing services that are integrated allow the experience to be very user friendly. And the relationship now is built that, so the U University Village has showcased this particular entity on their page with an at tag that has a hyperlink to it. In turn, if a user goes to that hyperlink, they have a chance to go to the specific page or an outside link and they get the end value. So it's all about what's the value that I can provide with the specific partners that I can build a relationship with or that I'm already in a relationship with. And then you can create these clever, clever posts. So you can say, we got, and then do an at tag, this person's book, so this is an author, at the Urban Space Library. So their specific apartment complex has a library. And it was bought by the specific person is a resident. So here you're showcasing people and you're showcasing uh, an author and you're showcasing your own property, whereby you are amplifying beyond the small set of fans that you have and you're building relationships. Remember, whenever you brag about people, they can't help but want to return the favor. And when you genuinely do it and it's not sappy, they're going to want to not only return the favor, but they're going to want to top it because they want to be able to add as much value to you as you have delivered to them. Another example of amplification is pinning your post to the top. And I promised you I wouldn't do too many of the big enterprise companies. I wanted to keep it more wholesome and small. But one of the best companies that does this is Starbucks. And so when you put on a simple post, obviously in an engaging photograph, and you go ahead and you pin it or to the very top, what that does is it marks that specific post up to the top left as the first post on your page, on your wall, for seven days. Thereby, anybody who's coming to your wall for the very first time, they've got an opportunity to see the most important asset or engaging asset that you have. And here, Starbucks is talking about iced coffee. And, and so it gives them an opportunity to immediately grab that person as maybe a like, maybe a like for this particular post, maybe it's a comment, maybe it's a share. But that's a good strategy because it allows your pin to go to the very top and to stay there for seven days. You might have a webinar, uh, you might have a specific listing, you might have a, a brand new promotion if you're a dentist, if you're a flower shop and you're running a Valentine's special, this gives you an opportunity not to get lost in the newsfeed for the people coming to your page for the first or subsequent time, but they see that promotion in the top left and they don't have to search for it. And then another way to amplify is to star important stories. And this is where when you star, again, everything that you're going to be doing for this is going to appear in this top right corner, and it's going to be a drop down. While this is a static slide right here, you can't see it. But when you go onto your wall and you've made a post, just put your cursor up to the top right corner, and you're going to see the pencil light up. And then you'll be able to star it, which means that instead of having the traditional width, you're going to expand across two columns, thereby this does not go into the newsfeed uh, as this size, but it does stay on your wall so that when people are kind of scrolling through your wall, and oftentimes they do to figure out what's happening, and when they're engaged, of course, with that first pin, you've got them, and they want to spend a little bit more time on your site. So here you have expanded your video or your, maybe it's a coupon, or maybe it's a photograph, and you've given that star importance so that others, as they thread through it, it allows the visual to pop off pretty easily. And then milestones. This is something, again, that's overlooked. And it's a very simple thing. But when you first started on Facebook, you can create your very first dig. You can show exactly when you started Facebook or when you started your company. And this, again, just tells your story. One of the reasons why people buy is not only the word of mouth and the testimonials, but it is the story behind the person giving the testimonial. And it's that personal story that will sell a person every single time 
into buying your service or your brand or your product. So whenever you can give them more stories, you give them something to talk about. Another idea of that is perhaps you would go ahead and put up your video. So we have Carrie Dandy here who's gone ahead and put together two things here. She's gone ahead and she's pinned, as you can see in this, this little ribbon up here, she's gone ahead and, and pinned her post. So for a short time, that was appearing in the top left for seven days. And then it also was a video, so it archived in her video album. And then also she allowed it to be a milestone, which means that when people go all the way down, just like they do on this top right corner here, this is start, they're going to go back to your start date and they're going to see her video, which is who she is. It's engaging. It's fun. This is what it's like to work with me. This is how much fun we can have together. And that gives people an understanding of what you're, you're going to give people your talking points and you're going to give them that fun story to be able to go ahead and, and showcase. So to sum it up, what we're doing here is when it comes to Facebook, Facebook engagement in specific, the key is to know your audience and to really understand what in the heck makes them tick. And if you know what topics, what words and emotions will trigger them to take action, because it's all about action for us business people, it becomes much easier to craft the perfect post that demands engagement. And once you know your audience, use these three Facebook post strategies to solicit massive engagement. And by the way, here's the great thing about our time together. With the exception of that one Starbucks example, most of these posts were not from big brands. Some real people having really cool conversations. So now I am going to go ahead and give you the opportunity to ask any questions. This is going to be your turn. So I'm going to look at the questions. There were a couple questions that came in. And then if you guys uh, want to be able to ask any live, I'll go ahead and unmute everybody. So if everybody gets a little noisy, then I'll start muting you all up. But if you want to ask away, but first give me a chance to be able to respond back to some of those written questions. So the first one is posting two times on Saturday and two times on Sunday a good idea. That is new to me. And I haven't really been doing that much on the weekends at all. I learned something today. Oh, Susan Brady, you're so awesome. So yes, I think I think it is, again, it's knowing your your audience. But again, remember that when people are on the weekends, you don't want it to be so salesy, but you want it to be a little bit more local because people are looking, how do I spend time with my family? Uh, what kind of uh, promotions can I take advantage of? And they've got free time. So if you give them some ideas about how to spend their time, how to spend their money, and it's related to either your neighborhood or specific to your, your brand, then you've, you've added some great benefit. And, and if it's not, and it's just something like a great photograph and a funny, that's great too, because people have more time to be able to thumb through Facebook than they do during the week. And that gives you an opportunity all, all to stay top of mind. And that is really the backbone behind people talking about you and then recommending you and ultimately choosing you. So I've got the, the lines open. Does anybody have any questions? You guys are too easy. So remember, the secret to engaging on Facebook isn't, isn't really about showing off your products or your services directly. It's really about finding the creative way to showcase how those products and services fit into the lifestyle of your target audience. And if your business finds a way to do that, specifically these three examples, you'll have what it takes to make Facebook an integral part of the marketing mix and accomplish your company goals. So if, if you don't have any more questions, or if you have questions along the way and you kind of think, ooh, I wish I had asked that one, feel free to come on over to our Facebook page later today or any time throughout the week. And that's facebook.com forward slash SUMA with two M's social. Or just type in SUMA social into the Facebook search box and we'll pull up. Or you can also post your questions in the SUMA Social Elite group on Facebook. And whether I get to it, one of my colleagues gets to it, or even one of your, 
community members gets to it, uh, it's going to be a great way for you to get your questions answered. Ooh, and we've got one more question that just popped in. How do stories get connected to your page? We can discuss that later, just trying to figure out how to do that. Okay, uh, Christine, uh, probably later today you and I can uh, put our brains together and, and, and wrap some strategies behind that, so no worries. But again, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful afternoon.